So welcome to Mi Factory's Open Factory Streaming number seven. Um, for those of you uh, watching this for the first time, I briefly ex quickly explain how this works. So I'm going to work here in the Mi Factory workshop for the next two hours on a real Mi Factory open design project. Uh, so real time work, experimenting, uh, and you can watch this. Um, and later the video will end up on YouTube. And you will see while I'm working here, I will take the camera from time to time and take pictures of the progress uh, made here in the workshop. And these uh, pictures will end up on a, on Flickr. And uh, if you watch this on YouTube now, you can uh, see in the video description the link to this uh, Flickr album. And in this Flickr album, uh, watch out for all images tagged with number seven. And if you see something there you find interesting, then you can go back to the video and try to figure out when this was produced here in this process. Okay, but now let me explain what we are going to work on today. So last uh, week in the Open Factory streaming number six, we made a spontaneous experiment and created this uh, Styroform open shelf node. So we will continue to work on the open shelf node project today. And I really, really liked how this uh, turned out and how simple it was to produce. And I decided that uh, I should definitely uh, uh, look deeper into this. So today we're going to experiment a little bit more with uh, op uh, open shelf nodes made out of styrofoam. Uh, we will create an entire shelf with uh, shelf nodes from this material here and uh, I will also make some experiments with these more commonly available styrofoam pieces every one of us uh, holds in their hand from time to time and if it would be possible to set up a uh, temporary shelves using this material as shelf node material, I think this would be very, very interesting. You know, uh, for example, for the purpose of exhibitions, where you don't exhibit too heavy things, just lightweight objects. Uh, and especially, I think, uh, museums or other institutions who might be interested in creating an exhibition, I think they have a lot of this stuff laying around. So um, creating something uh, interesting looking and working as an infrastructure for an exhibition from throwaway material, so an upcycling project basically, could be very interesting and uh, we should definitely uh, look into this today. So uh, the first thing I will do, I will take this and cut it into smaller pieces and try to glue this together because uh, the parts I could my, get my hands on in this short amount of time isn't thick enough to create a shelf node that will support 16 millimeter rods. So the first experiment is can we turn the smaller pieces uh, using a regular glue into larger pieces that then can be drilled and used like in shelf node uh, from styrofoam. And then I will take more of this material. This is a material uh, that is used for insulating buildings. I hope that's the right word. I should have looked it up. Insulating, so when you try to uh, dress up a building so that it doesn't uh, l uh, lose too much uh, heat or doesn't uh, catch too much uh, heat in the summer and doesn't lose too much in the winter. So, and then we will create an entire shelf. So we will produce uh, at, at least eight, maybe 12 of these shelf nodes. And then hopefully the time will be enough. Set up a whole um, shelf with this. So with, with uh, three floors and then put, a, put some weights on this to see how strong uh, these shelf nodes actually are and what kind of objects you can um, display. On them. So it's a lot of, lot of stuff to do. I will try to work really, really quickly so that we can uh, push all of this into the next two hours. So first step, cut this down, glue this together so that we can later, when the glue is dried, maybe in this two hours, uh, see how we, if it's possible to glue with the glue I have this together and then turn this into a shelf node. This down.
Oh, today we will make really a mess here in the workshop. So we have to see everything. I'm still not sure from the tools I already have which ones are the best to work with styrofoam. So this is our bread knife from the workshop's kitchen. Didn't work that well. Maybe the cutter is the best option. Okay, the cutter is by far the best solution. Sure, if I have enough material. Just remember that we have 
one more. Maybe I missed this. I mean these layers are really really thin so you will need a lot of glue which is something I don't like but since I didn't manage to collect in a short amount of time a thicker material to start from this time it will be like this um, I like to test two different glues uh, I heard that you can use a uh, wood glue for this and I also have uh, some glue that says it can, it's made to also uh, glue styrofoam but um, I want to see both glues in action so I will actually create two of those. That's a mess. And definitely an environmental disaster. start with the wood glue. It's wood glue express.
It's a nice feel. It's, it's fun to touch this. But it's always fun to touch them. Diophon. I guess. Wood glue. Here I, I have a glue that says it can glue a lot of things. It says you claim it can glue everything, but on the uh, list is uh, styrofoam mentioned. Uh, and it even says it, it even displays a green leaf. Um, why? I don't know. It says that it doesn't have any Lösungsmittel. I like the English word. But if that's already enough to qualify for a green leaf, I screw this, um, and the goal of the screw is that uh, the glue gets evenly distributed. I never tried this before, but I'm sure it makes sense. But right now, it feels like it does. Definitely a different feel on my fingers. The wood glue is um, nicer. Okay, this is definitely not to recommend. This will also be a, a mess to recycle. It won't be possible. So why I'm trying this at all? Ooh. It gets loose. Okay, this was step one. I'm going to wash my hands and then let's make 14 of these cubes, drill them and then assemble the whole shelf from these um, nodes. I'm back in a second. Thank you. 
Okay, the experiment is to make a whole shelf with three floors from um, shelf notes out of uh, styrofoam. And this styrofoam I got as a present from a construction worker. Um, and they were busy insulating a big building. And I took a picture, you can see it on the screen, um, from the material, in case you're interested. Uh, what's the brand name? Uh, what's the number? What is it for? And so on. And uh, he gave this little leftover piece to me uh, for these experiments we are going to make. So I am going to cut this and I'm going to uh, drill this and then try to assemble a whole uh, shelf uh, from the nodes that come out of this material. We will use on one floor uh, DIY um, rubber bands that we will cut out of an old bike tire so that the whole uh, experiment shelf will have this upcycling feel that you can show and see that it's really possible to make this out of cheaply available or even free uh, materials that you can find uh, usually in an industrialized city uh, around almost every corner. Um, yeah, and I will do this pretty uh, dirty so uh, I won't um, try to be super precise, I won't use a uh, uh, machines that allow me to have perfect angles and so on. So quick and dirty, shoot this together. This will uh, be an experiment to see if this is really something for DIY level. Will it be super easy uh, for a DIY person without any heavy or cool uh, machines um, to make this? And I'm, I have the feeling that it will work because the great thing about these notes is that um, even if you get the angle wrong, there's flexibility in the material, not so much, but maybe enough to uh, allow you later to correct some errors you make during um, drilling. But that's my assumption. It might turn out that this is actually not the case or that uh, it's not possible to get the level of accuracy, accuracy still needed to make sure that 12 shelf nodes all work together shelf. Okay, let's get to the cutting part. How much do I get out of these? How much? At least a little bit of accuracy, come on.
before we go to horror. See the material has two perfect um, surfaces, and I can use these to get uh, uh, better angles. By the way, this material is 12, 120 millimeters thick. That's a good idea. Let's go for seven to six. I will go the risky road and make six, uh, a 60 millimeter to 60 millimeter um, cubes. I hope that they will have enough material in the end to support 60 millimeter rods. Let's risk nothing, let's drill. Okay, last week's experiment showed that you, uh, when you drill this with a 12, 12 millimeter drill, uh, then 60 millimeter rods will go in just perfectly and they will even stick a little bit. You can also uh, force the rods in when you use a 10 millimeter drill, but then maybe your cube will break, so too much pressure. So. Uh, although we might have less um, stickiness to the rods, we will go with the 12mm uh, drill to not risk that the material breaks. Mm. Ah, this is a leftover drill support. Or shelf mode, so I can use this right away here. Can I? Should I?
Okay, this is where I will take the most risk and drill this. Without any support for accuracy. I should make sure that they are all the same. They are all the same type. There are two types of off the shelf notes type A and type B. And we should make type A notes. wonder what's the difference between type A and type B notes, um, I recommend to read the documentation. There's one uh, sub page which is called um, Key Design Info and there you will find the explanation of the difference. Okay, before I go into mass manufacturing mode, let's test this. Is ah, yeah. Haha, <laughs> broke. It's not cool. We need to make them larger. So it's or to measure more exactly more exact with the holes. Let's go with the overall thickness, but Okay, I'll stay with the six millimeter, six centimeter, sixty millimeter um, version, but then be extra careful when drilling. So, mass manufacturing mode. Let's make thirteen more. Thank you. 
No. Maybe even make boards if you really want to <laughs> exhibit something lightweight. Jesus. Cuatro.
Tito, today it's really a little bit like a factory. Maybe I should wear some <clears throat> protection. Thank you. 
Extruding time. Okay, I will not uh, use a pen. I will just, like last week, freestyle my way through this and hope I get lucky. I have two shots to miss. Cool, yeah. And let's get them ready here. Get the test. Just test it if it's uh, when you pull the rods out, if it's easy uh, to get them in again without losing them, without having them to lose too much um, friction. And yes, it works. So I can now test on the nose before I put them onto a bigger shelf. Oh. 
always test for type A and type B. That's not really straight because it's <laughs> another one breaks the dust. Okay, forget what I said. We will use machines. Oh, I don't think that we will manage to assemble the shelf in this stream. But I will assemble it and then there will be pictures also in the Flickr stream. Um, so you can see the result. And I will write some documentation. Uh, about findings. Um, forget this
one is correct, and that one. this Okay, it looks like this is really, this tool is suspended in an insane way. I don't remember when this happened. So, I will try the 10 millimeter one and see it also works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. Hey, maybe I really have to correct this. Maybe a 12 
16mm drill isn't to recommend. Since mine is heavily broken and probably drills 40mm holes. But well, this 10mm hole seem to work really nicely. Yeah. So I might have to correct myself and go for the 10 millimeters. I mean, this is also a bit bent. The drill, so it's also not 100% accurate when it comes to the diameter. But you know, nothing breaks. It goes perfectly in. Best angles, but it's good enough. Maybe. So, four. Okay, so far so good. I'm not sure in terms of bandwidth and streaming and video uploading and all the energy this consumes. If I calculate this right, this will take another 20 minutes at least to drill these. And then I will clean the workplace and then, um, yeah, it will be four. So um, nothing new or interesting will happen in this stream. So. I should probably end this here, because everything interesting uh, to see already has happened. So I think I will say bye bye this time. I will continue to work here, but I'm not sure it really makes sense to stream this any longer. Whoa. 
Ah, wait. Tada! But let's have a look at the glued versions. <coughs> So these are the glued versions. This is the one with the wood glue that says uh, the glue need, need, takes five minutes to dry. So this should already be stable. I'm not sure about this one. This is the other glue, but it feels like it's quite solid. So I will drill these now and test them with the rods so we can see if this actually works. And I forgot to take pictures. That's not good. Let's take one picture. Mm. All the cutting. I missed it. Oh. All the gluing, I missed it. But you know, Okay, let's drill these and see what happens. I will drill, drill these by hand because I have the feeling I will be careful enough. These are large. I could go for 20 millimeter rods. Should I? No. Experiment number one. Can I? Cut it so that you have a nicer surface. Ooh, yes. Okay.
So we get something with a sword. Yeah. Loose when I drill them. I mean, they would probably need more time to dry. Dry. Yeah, this was too early. The glue. The alles kleber. Well done. So, I would go for the wood glue anyway, I guess. material that comes out is still a bit sticky. Oh no, I hope there is no glue on my drill. Yeah, okay. As we can see, it's not dry. It said it would be dry. Okay. So we can't say anything about this. At this point, let's clean the drill.
Okay. Um, I will finish uh, today's stream early because, uh, as I just said, um, we figured something out and now it has to be done. So uh, the remaining 30 minutes will be dedicated to drilling uh, the remaining uh, foam cubes into uh, proper shelf nodes and this will take at least 20 minutes and then I have to clean workplace and there won't be enough time to set up the shelf anyway which would be the next step interesting to watch I guess so and since uh, I am environmentally conscious I don't want to waste uh, the bandwidth for the streaming and for the um, uh, for the uh, video hosting on YouTube uh, to show something where there is nothing really to show. So we will end early this week, uh, but uh, I'm sorry that we get, don't get to the point where we set up the shelf, but I will do this at some point, maybe in, a, in an upcoming video streaming or maybe outside of this, uh, but I will document it definitely uh, in a way that it is easy to understand um, for outsiders, see how it works, if it works, uh, if it is, is something I would recommend, uh, where to twist it and so on. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I really like the, the styrofoam version, uh, especially uh, with, with its context of um, being maybe a solution for temporary exhibitions and that exhibitions probably have a lot of styrofoam laying around. Um, so to, to get there in this upcycling mode within institutions is something uh, maybe really interesting. Okay, um, yeah, the Open Factory will have a break in the coming weeks because we are uh, busy on Wednesdays with other things, um, but we will be back at some point and maybe there will be streamings in between uh, when we get to continue this work here to show you interesting th things. Um, but meanwhile, stay tuned to the Me Factory um, outlets. Uh, we have a lot of stuff produced in the past weeks. Uh, most of the documentation is uh, done, but almost none is already on the page. So something to discover there in the coming weeks via our newsletter. And we'll also become active and feed uh, our Twitter and Instagram and TikTok streams a little bit. At least that's the plan. Let's hope we get to this. There's so much work to do. Uh, thanks for your interest and um, See you soon.